Good evening. We have a quorum. We'll call the planning. We'll call the planning board meeting to order. And first up for general information, would be is, Tracy. Who is it? Tracy. Tracy. Oh, okay. Hi, gentlemen. Hi. So, yes, this is um, Athleta, and we do have, or I should say, um, Athleta does have approval from Mattress Firm to use those four spaces on the two pylon signs in the plaza. So you have approval to put your signs up on a pylon, and they're not going to put theirs up? Nope. Okay. We're switching them out. So all the spaces that Mattress Firm had, Athleta is allowed to have. Okay. So you just need approval for your pylon signs. Okay. So I'll make a motion to approve the pylon signs. Okay. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. I will get an I will get an email off to the building inspector accordingly. Awesome, wonderful. Very good. Thank you very much. You're Enjoy welcome. the rest of your evening. So I believe that Philip Price would be the next person for general business. Hey there, everybody. Um, I'm here to submit my, uh, my application for permit uh, for the building project at 113 Mill Street. And uh, I emailed you all the files today and uh, uh, also the, uh, all the abutters envelopes stamped. It's an address or at the town offices as well. So that's, that's where we're at at the moment. Were the, were the files received? Yes, I did get the files and I yeah. did circulate them around. Okay, great. Okay. So, Philip, you want to give a brief, brief description so the uh, oh audience, sure oh, yeah the I'm not exactly point. sure I'm not sure what my uh, what I'm supposed to do actually but um yeah we're uh, we're proposing a. a uh, an accessory apartment uh, for my mother to move into at 113 Middle Street. Uh, it's uh, it's going to be pretty much on the footprint of the old uh, shed slash garage that was put in by Phil Reed many years ago. It's going to be attached to the house with a breezeway slash sunroom. Um, and uh, yeah, that's mostly it. Our, um, it's going to have a... a Bedroom, kitchen, bath, um, small, but, you know, connected. Um, windows and doors. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, that's what, we're, that's what we're hoping to do. It's a one-story building. Um, it's going to match the design of this, of the current house we're in, color and design, pretty much. Um, and uh, it's... Um, uh, yeah, not sure what else to, how well, else to, does anyone have any questions, I guess, about it at this point? You got all the, um, and we got all the information, now mailing labels. Yes. We need two sets of mailing labels. Or yeah. Two I, sets of envelopes. Uh-huh. So I gave those to the, I dropped them off at the town hall today. Oh, okay. Okay. Very good. I'll pick those up. Okay. All right. What was okay. the issue regarding using town property resolved? Wasn't there some issue there? No, that was resolved, yes. Yeah. We have a license to use the driveway. Okay. Okay. So if, if everything is in order, we'll set the public hearing up for April 20th at 645. 20th, okay. April 20th, the third Tuesday. Okay. All right, sounds good. And, uh, okay. Yeah, I guess that's it, right? That's it for today for you, yes. Great. Thanks very, very much for your time. See you soon. Thank you. Next up, Bill. I 
believe that that is it for general information. Um, okay. I recognize most of the other names as being either river related or uh, for the Henderson accessory apartment. Jim, what was the date you gave them? April? April 20th for the public hearing? April 20th for the public hearing, yes. Okay. We do have a request from Kevin Michelson for a continuance. And the way he requested it, um, it is for the 17th of May. So I'll make a motion to continue Kevin's hearing for the accessory apartment on Grand Oak Drive to May 4th, the first Tuesday. I would second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. And also, Halley Garage. I believe they requested that to when, Bill? Uh, to the, I think they uh, are the 20th as well. Okay. So that would be the going to you said May 20? April 20. April 20. Okay. I entertain a motion to continue the Hadley Garage to April 20. I think we did that last time. Let me just oh, we did that last that. time. Oh, sorry about that. Um, okay. Yeah, we, we uh, right. did it, uh, pick up our last meeting. Yeah, you're right. To the 20th. Okay. April 20th. Be a busy night if that all goes down. Yeah. Oh, Kevin asked for May 4th. Okay. Correct. I mean, he actually made a, he continued to the 17th, but that's the Monday before our meeting. So, okay. Okay, so we still have a couple of minutes. Um, Randy Iser did send a plan in, um, but he sent an email later today that um, the client was having second thoughts, so he doesn't need the plan looked at presently. Okay. Anybody, anybody else have any general information before we go on to the public hearing time? No. Okay, uh, did everyone get the uh, revised riverfront RV bylaw that I sent around today? You yes. Said last night. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll can we can talk about that later. Obviously, I just wanted to be sure it got out there. I think as we can start the public hearing because this is just, this is strictly a meeting for the abutters. We reopen the public hearing on the Henderson accessory apartment request. The reason we're reopening it was because we found out that the some, if not all, of the abutters received the public notice in a mail the day after the public hearing was actually conducted. Even though the mailings were mailed out a week ahead of time, the mail was late. For whatever reason, leave it at that. 
So if the Henderson would briefly explain what you want to do so we can just break it up for discussion again so the abutters can have any two cents worth. Sure. Um, so we have an existing um, set of two rooms, which is a kitchenette and a bedroom and a bathroom, which was for our mother-in-law and she passed. And so our daughter uh, who's disabled is looking to move back in with us and we wanna turn it into an accessory apartment. It'll be just over 500 square feet. There will be no changes to the exterior of the house. All we will be doing is modifying the kitchen area so that it has a, a stove and a dishwasher in addition to the sink that it currently has. Um, I, it has a mini fridge, so we'll just have a, the fridge in there as well. Um, we will be putting a door into our kitchen to uh, lock and make it separate from the other unit. Uh, again, no exterior changes whatsoever. Uh, you asked last, last meeting uh, about parking spaces. Uh, we have two two garage spaces that are used right now for cars and our cars will be in them. There is only one car with her apartment and it can, it can easily be in the uh, current driveway, which is two cars wide. Um, and the U.S. Post Office truck can continue to make his U-turn in our driveway with that car there. So there's been no issues whatsoever uh, in that manner. Uh, any other uh, questions? Any, any comments or questions from the abutters? Yes, sir. Un unmute your mic. You unmute. Mike, un unmute Mr. Duffy. You're still muted. M Mr. Duffy, unmute your microphone. It should be at the bottom left of your screen. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Yep. Okay. Right. Uh, well, I only have the question that's already been answered, whether or not there was exterior changes and there aren't. Uh, so I'm the direct butter and I have, I have no problems with this. So it's fine with me. Thank uh, you. So. Okay. Just, uh, since I'm the house that's closest, in fact, this property was cut out of the uh, 31 Rocky Hill Road that uh, I own. So it's fine with me. Thank you. Anybody else have anything? If not, we can vote. Again, I have, a, when you're done voting, I have a question <laughs> afterwards. Sure, go ahead. What's your question? Oh, oh, you, uh, something has to be notarized for the building inspector, you said? Yes. Yes. So that, that's all I need to know. Yeah, it has to be simply that something something that's I think it's in the by bylaw something about that if you ever move out, the new abutters would be notified accordingly. The new owners. So not notified that it's a it, it's a um, owner occupied. Is this something right. Okay. It must be it must be an owner occupied accessory apartment. And they yeah. must live there. All right. And is that it's something a, I have to do they, now? Okay. Yeah, and they yeah. can choose not to continue the accessory apartments there at their wish if they decide, decide that. So okay. actually, actually what, what you are signing is a notarized um, uh, statement that you understand that you must, the, the property must be owner occupied. Okay. So we and go now you, to the building inspector. So yes. now for the building inspector. Oh, okay. And okay. then if you were to change, if you were to sell it, a right. we have, right. new owner would have to do the same. Right. Okay. Must also authorize, must also notarize that they would use it as an owner occupied accessory apartment. Correct. Right. Okay. Thank you. Now, I'm just printing out uh, the checklist again since I don't have it handy. So, this is the 16. 
Seven. Okay, so um, satisfy with Title V, complete separate housekeeping unit, only one within a single family house, site plan shows all changes, site plan conforms with the zoning bylaw. Uh, it's not applicable, no elevation, because no exterior alteration, uh, not greater than 900 square feet, off street parking available and conforms to all other designs. So um, I'll make a motion to grant the application for a special permit for an accessory apartment uh, based upon the following findings and the following conditions. The project is in harmony with the general purpose and intent of the bylaw project is not detrimental to the established or future character of the neighborhood. Work will be uh, conducted in accordance with the submitted plans. Um, approval is for the specific intended use of the premises for an accessory apartment. A uh, special permit is automatically revoked if an owner no longer lives on the premises. Um, the accessory apartment shall never be enlarged beyond 900 square feet, um, not occupied by more than two adults plus related children. Um, special, uh, the owner must occupy one of the dwelling units and that's where the notarized letter. Um, um, and when uh, Approval, subject to approval of other boards if and as required, including Conservation Commission and any other agencies with jurisdiction. And that's the motion. I would second that. Motion a second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you for the thank you for your understanding, Mr. Henderson's. No problem. Thanks so much. Yep. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night. Right. And will you at some point be able to get the file to our yeah, box I'll, at Town Hall? I'll try to get that tomorrow. Okay, Mr. Mr. Comia. Hi, board. How, How are, are you? you? Hello. Um, I think that was my first public hearing that I witnessed. I'm usually never, you know, in attendance when you guys have another public hearing scheduled. So that was my first one. Um, that was pretty abbreviated. Yeah, I'm sure. And I'm sure you have <laughs> yeah. some, you, and it sounds like your future ones in April sound, you know, um, maybe some more difficult. Um, so I think since the last meeting, um, I have been following, I know that the, the board has have been having continued discussions on the, um, the floodplain overlay um, zoning. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm here to assist with that. And, and I took a quick look at um, what um, the board and what um, Mark um, had drafted to, to um, maybe look at those things. Um, but I think since the last meeting, um, I'm still trying to get our staff to um, schedule a meeting for the MS4 compliance for the regulations. Um, there's some difficulty due to workload at the moment, um, but we should, I, you know, the, the, the plan is to still engage and ensure that um, she leads that conversation with the committee that was in place um, before. Um, two summers ago. Wow. Um, and um, what I, I sent the board yesterday, this was based on the conversation from the last meeting, the, um, the master plan. Um, I know that there was at the, the meeting on the, the first meeting in February, the last time I was with the board, um, I believe there was discussion that the select board was seeking um, to have the planning board start looking at uh, master plan implementation. Um, and I shared um, the implementation schedule with the board, um, as well as um, another document, which is specific to the planning board as the lead 
um, and normally those are regulatory um, items. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm not sure if, um, you know, there's been any sentiment with regards to implementation or if you wanna discuss the, um, the um, floodplain overlay at this moment. Um, I, yeah, I'm, I'm here, you know, to support the board um, with whatever it's seeking at the moment. Well, at the moment, the um, implementation is uh, not the highest priority because it's all budget all the time, as David Dixon used to say. Um, this actually uh, came initially from a conversation with about wanting to get moving on this in some way. So thank you for having it prepared and... Uh, I can probably share it with the select board as well and the town administrator. So, um, I mean, at the same time, in the same token, you, the, the board and the town are, you know, just in my experiences in working with the town are somewhat addressing, you know, the, um, some of the areas here, obviously you're, you know, Goal one, strategy B, is discuss strengthening floodplain regulations. And it, it's not necessarily strengthening it. However, it's clarifying it and clarifying it to the point where you're ex, where you're, um, where the board is also trying to comply with the new FEMA um, guidelines and regulations. Um, and then obviously I'm sure the board will be, you know, having to address maybe um, some issues regarding development along Route 9 as the, the street is widened um, and maybe development applications come in with regards to now parcels being non-conforming um, dimensionally. Um, but, you know, I think just kind of initially reviewing what, you know, the planning board um, may be responsible for in the next couple of, you know, years. Um, it, it seems like you're, you're moving in that direction uh, in addition to, you know, supporting the development through your approvals and um, plan review and special permits. Um, but I, I, yeah, I understand that, you know, it's not necessarily of utmost importance as obviously the board, um, you know, right now is in the middle of trying to, um, support the um, floodplain overlay district and, and a bylaw amendment for that. So uh, I don't know if you got uh, the feedback that we did, we did hear from town council on the um, impact of the widening on development. Um, and we've been told that uh, we should review any application on the basis of the legal status of the lot at the time of the application without regard to whether or not pieces of the lot are going to be taken by the uh, state at some point in the future. Um, so no, don't count our eggs before they're hatched. Yeah, well, well, we'll we'll certainly work on that basis. But I, I, I am telling people that if uh, if they are putting drainage structures or other permanent site improvements mm -hmm. in the area that will be taken, that we may have to have uh, further conversation. Yeah. So uh, we'll okay. see. Nothing. Uh, we've actually had very little filing on uh, on any kind of commercial development. Um, most of our filings that we've been working on have been accessory apartments. That's very popular. So I think with regards to accessory apartments, the, um, um, I believe, Bill, you discussed this at a previous meeting. Um, it was, um, and it's recent because this is um, very, this is very timely. Um, with regards to the housing choice bill that the governor signed, which was part of the economic bill um, earlier this year. And that is specific to decisions that the planning board would be making 
um, for things like accessory apartments or rezonings to support um, um, rezonings to support uh, additional housing. Um, and that's specific to the threshold of votes where normally a special permit with regards to um, housing um, would require the supermajority now requires a simple majority. Um, the regulations are still kind of coming out. Um, so I, you know, the gist of the new legislation um, is that with regards to housing, um, the, the voting threshold will be simple majority and that, that goes for town meeting. Um, so, you know, that's going to be a change of um, probably a, a, a thought process uh, with regards to identifying housing needs um, and how it's brought forward um, through either this board or in general. Um, but that is a major change with the new um, legislation that was signed by the governor recently. So we do, maybe this isn't the time to go into a long discussion. I've been sort of following this and kicking around the idea of maybe making uh, uh, accessory apartments within, an within the, a structure, no exterior alterations by right. Um, you know, we just had an example of that. They're, they're converting an existing space into an accessory apartment without changing the footprint of the building. Mm -hmm. um, that is clouded by the fact that we have a very controversial application pending that would involve no exterior alteration. Um, and the other option is maybe to uh, allow an exterior, uh, an accessory apartment that involves exterior alteration in addition to likewise go through without, by right, just subject to building code. And uh, what I would like to do, and I know I don't have the support of the entire board on this, I'd like to reserve the special permit process for a detached accessory apartments. But that is many, uh, many miles down the road, I think, at this point. But as a way to address some of the concerns that, uh, that came out in the Housing Choice Bill. Ken, Ken one, one thing we have, certainly it's not unique to any college town, but uh, the fact is we have many houses that uh, I call student stuffers. You, there are seven or eight cars parked out there. They're not indicated as apartments, but uh, they are indeed apartments and they house a lot of people. So, uh, I mean, that's one of the things we'll have to be aware of. You know, are they on a septic system? Are they on sewer? So, but uh, that's a whole nother discussion. And uh, I think we'll have enough discussion probably on the, uh, the floodplain regulations. Well, it's similar to the floodplain regulations in that the, the rule of law or the bylaw wasn't uh, enforced. And so now we got it before us. There we go. We got 10 trailers on a lot on the river and we got 29 students in a house. <laughs> Same thing. Yeah. So, Ken, did you get the draft, the revised draft of the uh, river bylaw, of the RV bylaw that I sent out yesterday? Um, yes, I quickly looked at it. Let me pull that up. Bill, I didn't look at it. Can you give me a quick uh, cliff oh, note? Yeah, I, I can pull it up. But what I basically did was to say that uh, one RV is allowed on any lot. Uh, more than one RV would be allowed if you can maintain 2,500 square foot of area and um, 25 feet of spacing between RVs and uh, between RVs on abutting lots, if possible, and that anything over three 
would require compliance with the um, sanitary code. And then we'll just leave it up to the building inspector to um, within those parameters. Um, and then the rest of the language is somewhat unchanged. No, uh, hey, you want me to bring it up? This is basically for six months. For May six months. October. 179 days. 179, that's what yeah. they uh, see. It's the sanitary code, the one that brings in the family campground? Uh, yes. Okay. Are we going to have frontage on the, uh, on the river or, or not? What? Uh, what Mark Dunn proposed, frontage on the river? Uh, the no, I did not. You didn't put that language in. I didn't put that in. Let me... Uh... I think you, could, you can do that because then you're... You're discriminating against people that don't have land on the river. <laughs> well, this is. Uh, a... Let me pull something right. up here. I mean, basically, by saying that they have to space them out, we kind of address. Oh. You know, if you have, if you don't have the river frontage, then you have to hold them back from the river to get the spacing. So it, I think that should the spacing should serve our concerns. Is this coming through as something visible? I we are seeing a list of your files. Okay. Uh, let's see what I can do here. Okay, let's try that again. Uh, nope. All right. There we go. Is, Seasonal is, use. Yeah, is this readable now? Yeah, I think, I think <laughs> it could be half of the screen. Yeah, if you can slide it to the left a bit. Okay, I seem to have a some green lines here on my screen. I'm not seeing those. Okay, does that look centered? No, it's cut off on the right. Cut off on the right, okay. Well, it's, it's centered, but it's truncated on the right, I guess. It's... Yeah. Try putting it in landscape view. Uh, yeah, it doesn't like to let me play with it oh, okay. um, when I'm sharing. So let me try. The reason I kind of emphasize that we probably should have something as far as frontage on the river is that uh, you can see people becoming really creative. Uh, you know, they'll be spacing, but will the spacing be to the side, to the front, to the back, or you could line them up like a train. Uh, but uh, that's perhaps uh, a view from the past where we people became very creative in the amount of trailers they had on a narrow piece of property. Well, the so is, creativity is would be limited to three trailers, up Pardon? to three trailers. Well, you know, some lots will support more than three. Uh, is this coming through legibly? Yes, it's still truncated more? though. Huh. Okay, I don't know how to fix that from my end. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, I, I can share if you'd like, but I only have the PDF. Okay. Yeah, why don't we go with that? Okay. This word uh, does not uh, seem to want to be helpful. Here's an issue. Oh, I have something oh, else. Now it works. Now okay. we can see. That's good. Okay. Okay, so the first part, not more than 179 consecutive days. 
permitted with approval from the community floodplain administrator, who is the building inspector. Okay. Subject to the requirements of the bylaw and other policies and procedures. And in the, the main bylaw, he is given authority to um, uh, draw up regulations and applications and forms. Uh, one recreational vehicle, any lot, more than one, if the lot provides for a minimum spacing of 25 feet, spacing of 25 feet from uh, recreational vehicles on abutting lots, and a minimum of 2,500 square feet of area for each recreational vehicle. Three or more subject to the sanitary code. And then everything else is pretty much unchanged. I took out the bit about the uh, performance bond. Um, uh, I just don't see that as something that is going to be manageable. Uh, but there are requirements of no danger of pollution, uh, utilities located to minimize flood damage, adequate methods for disposal of sewage, refuse, and waste, and applicant is not excused from complying with other applicable laws. Um, Bill, slide back up. When you say in the district, how is district uh, defined? Didn't I see district there? The, the underlying district. Underlying district, So yeah. that's agricultural residential. Okay. We're, Bill, on this A130, AH, AE zones, B130, and BE and ZB zones, where are those defined? Is that... Can I'll... Yeah, those are defined in the, um, I believe, currently in your bylaw. They're flood zones. Um, you know, for the purposes of Hadley, V1, VE, V, probably uh, you don't need to include there um, because that's specific to coastal. Um, but those should be defined um, within the Hadley bylaw, the zoning bylaw. Um, if not, then we should define it because you're um, labeling here. And I do have language for that. Uh, so here's the bylaw as a whole. And um, uh, the exact boundary, okay. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure it does mention it in here specifically, so. So Could we, I, I, now the way the bylaw is written without mentioning frontage on the river, you could put trailers or RV vehicles virtually any place. That's correct. That's what I was thinking. Could we about. at least mention that these lots must have river frontage? Because you mentioned it was in the agricultural residential district. That's. Well, I remember several years back that rent house that my sister and I own in North Alley. The wife's parents lived on the West Coast and they were driving an RV out here and they wanted to park it there for two months visiting the daughter and the family. I think they did, actually. So this would certainly allow them to do that. But no, not at your house. Uh, no, 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 at the farmhouse. Yeah, it does say that yeah. in... Yeah. 13721 recreational vehicles are permitted in the floodplain with the approval of the community floodplain administrator. So that means you're not putting them in agricultural residential districts that are not in the floodplain. Okay, you got that covered. Good. Thank you. So then somebody's parents can't visit. I'm just asking with a trailer and park it on the lot for two months in the summertime. No matter if, if even if it's residential, agricultural, but this this bylaw is not authorizing that. Okay, no. that's all I want to know. Okay. So, Bill, the uh, it's my understanding the zoning board of appeals did not want the authority to grant a special permit, and it's going to be strictly in the discretion of the building inspector or the 
the administrator of the floodplain, correct? Correct. It, it didn't seem to, it was not so much that they didn't want to do it. I think they were willing to do it, but it turned out that there really wasn't much for them to do that the building inspector couldn't handle directly. I think, I think that's a good point. Uh, and uh, Jim and I were at the last meeting of the River Committee um, and we, we got really an education from the Conservation Commission uh, about, how, <laughs> about how much authority they have, which makes our authority under a zoning bylaw look puny. Um, so they will now enforce the, uh, the building. So 100 feet from a wetlands, 200 feet from a... Uh, Hundred feet from uh, right from a, a waterway under Water. the, under the Rivers Act, they have two hundred feet. Uh, two hundred feet, and the first hundred feet is a no disturb zone. Um, okay. it, uh, unless that's all you have, in which case they might let you do something there. Uh, okay. But they don't even want you in the second hundred feet if you have more more land, and they have a very expansive uh, definition of what. Uh, constitutes an impact under the um, wetlands state wetlands act so, so is this uh, going to be put into our bylaw that the conservation commission will have the authority to do x no 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 so, they, uh, their authority exists independent of zoning okay and there but people may not be aware of that well we do have it in the last paragraph that not excused from complying with other applicable laws in okay good thank you um so just so people know that they are not excused but um our jurisdiction under to for zoning bylaws is under chapter 40a uh their jurisdiction is under a different statutory scheme so, Bill, basically, we're allowing, say, Mitch's, as an example, to be categorized as a, as a campground now under state regulation. Uh, not necessarily allowing it to be characterized. The state regulations create the characterization. Oh, so yeah, that's what I meant. That's what if, I meant. Uh, At least we're defining it. Yeah, you know, whatever they are grandfathered for down there yeah. is for zoning. Uh -huh. and not for uh, Rivers Act or uh, Wetlands Protection. Uh -huh. So even if you have a site that is grandfathered for parking trailers during the summer, yeah. they still have to comply with the Conservation Commission and the Board of Health requirements. So it's a, it's a Conservation Commission issue now then? Yes. Okay. okay. And, and it pretty much always has been. It's yeah. just, among other things, that's another area where there was non-enforcement. Well, Bill, yeah. fill in, in, in what we're talking about now. So he'll be aware of it too. Kenneth, are you there? Yeah. Yeah, well, what this is, it's, a, uh, it's really a marina. And uh, way back when, there was some... Uh, there was a lawsuit and they said it was grandfathered in. Well, the grandfathering was seven or nine trailers only. Now there's probably 30 parked along the river and the docks are there. And it is, it's, it's grown quite a bit. So uh, this is what we're talking about. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm gathering from your amendments that, um, and after Bill said that, you know, the permitting with regards to the Zoning um, Board of Appeals granting special permits that throughout this conversation, um, you know, I think that having the, the, um, the Community Floodplain Administrator be the arbiter or the, the person reviewing the applications for these RVs to be placed there um, probably makes sense because that means that um, you know, that office would be reviewing um, that. And I think the board um, has identified ways to manage through the zoning bylaw, um, you know, those particular parcels that you know, have, there's some challenges. Um, and clearly, I, yeah. excuse me, clearly it's going to 
costs some money to have these people go down there and do the inspections or whatever. You think it would be reasonable to charge a fee, say, per RV? That is something that is being discussed, whether it would ah. be per, per RV or per lot, but, but okay. uh, the building inspector is on it. Okay. What, go, going back to the, to the uh, 7.2, the way it's written in the floodplain, they could now put a vehicle, uh, RV or multiple RVs any place in the Hadley Meadows and other places. That's what we want to avoid. You're right, Chip. We, we, want, to, we, we want to mention that the lot needs to have river frontage, even if it's only two feet. Just to you know, if somebody, if somebody wants to put their RV in the middle of asparagus field, all the better to them. No, no, <laughs> no, no. That's going to be. I don't yeah, think I... you can limit it to having river frontage. I, I would say that's lawsuit territory. I don't think you're, so. you're, you're discriminating. No, I want to be there, but I don't have. Why are you? Why are you allowing someone with river front frontage to do it, but not me? If I can walk through his property to get there. Well, isn't our point that we? We don't want them. We haven't allowed them in town, but they have existed on the riverfront, and so we're we're allowing them there against our, you know, because we don't want to create a hardship on those who have been. We just want it to be safe and reasonable. Yep. Those I don't know. If the, I don't know if the zoning bylaws is supposed to be reasonable. So I just made that change. If I, that I, looks... those, those simple words are fine, Bill. Just we, we don't min, we don't mention a minimum. They just need to have something. Mm -hmm. we're, we're we're talking pretty much in the flood overlay district. That's should that be included in order to define it, so somebody wouldn't put it in the middle of the asparagus lot. Well, I think that's what the river frontage. <laughs> Connecticut with Connecticut River frontage on that should yeah. that should take care of a lot of it. Do we? I mean, it it also could be applicable based on this this particular section living in your flood overlay district section of the bylaw. Um, obviously, the consistent thing to do would be to address it with the way that you're suggesting. The Connecticut River frontage, um, so you know, so the town is aware that it's specific to those parcels that, in the past, you know, have been. Uh, there's been a mixed bag with regards to enforcement of of um, the trailers along the Connecticut River at that location. Um, so, you know, I think that it's probably appropriate, and I'm sure legal counsel would maybe suggest the same thing. Well, to answer Mike's question a little bit, Michael, that the, uh, the zoning bylaw is pretty much written in an exclusionary factor. That is, nothing is allowed in the town of Hadley except, and it, it goes to list things. So people can't come up with the idea. And there is no trailers are allowed in town. So I know that. So we are designating, as Mark Dunn was saying, some areas where they are allowed under specific circumstances. But you're, you're making sub-districts within sub-districts. Essentially, is what you're doing. It's, that's why it's called an overlay district. Are we creating an overlay district on the uh, river? Yes, this yeah. is, remember, this is part seven of a much larger bylaw, and it's... okay. The rest of it's pretty technical, what the state wants us to adopt and growing, building on what we have already adopted. This is the only section that has really attracted a lot of public attention. So that's why we're spending so much time on it. I just want to make sure that we're not going to be accused of discriminating against someone because they don't have frontage on the river, but, if, but they abut someone with frontage on the river. Get me? Michael, zoning, you can take any zoning as being discriminatory. How come your land on Route 47 is not as valuable 
because of a zoning change uh, as the land on Route 9. So uh, that's, uh, okay. that's the way it is. But w one question to Kim, Ken, before I forget, I did get a hold of Joy Dupernot and uh, talking about the potential sanctions that we had if, if we didn't qualify uh, to their satisfaction with our, this particular zoning bylaw. And uh, she said the sanctions are not going to be as uh, onerous as the original FEMA regulations were, which means, you know, no flood insurance, no lending from a bank, no, no federal funds expend, uh, extended into that area. She said, we'll be willing to work with people. Mm -hmm. And from the point of view of numbers, uh, the original FEMA had 25,000 communities accept the, uh, the floodplain regulations and only 2,000 uh, of the communities, 2,000 rejected it and only 200 were kicked out. So uh, I think they, they are willing to work with us if they don't agree with this particular bylaw. I think with with the way that you've addressed RVs, because you're not necessarily RVs in and itself are a permitted use within the floodplain. You are creating the town is creating code now for to address RVs being placed in these particular parcels within okay. the overlay, and you're addressing it based on dimensional uh, regulations, which is what zoning is supposed to do. Um, so I don't think that it, you wouldn't be in, I don't think that there is an issue of compliance with the general intent of um, the amendments that you have created. Um, so I don't think that there's an issue there per se. Um, yeah. yeah, we're following all the checklists that were created yeah. in your original information that you sent to us. Mm -hmm. so. And Bill, thank you. I. I I think you've honed in on yeah, some good of job, the Bill. Yeah. Really good job. Because this you, could you simplify up. things immensely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. I think uh, I think it'll be easier to manage and easier to enforce. And I think the what I understand from all of this um, is that FEMA wants a bylaw that we're we're enforcing. And to Mike's point, what we had before was not enforceable. Yeah, this, is much, this is much better. If been, once we found out how all of the other boards in town need to have their input, it really makes zoning, like Bill said, a tiny, tiny piece of the pie. Correct. And the Board of Health with the three or more trailers, that, uh, that four or five pages that was sent to us, is that's going to be onerous. Well, someone, someone can can persuade the Board of Health that uh, they do not fall under that protection, even if they have four trailers, because it's all maybe all family, all one family. But um, as someone mentioned in one of our earlier meetings, I think it was Mark Britton, that uh, why wouldn't we want to have um, sanitation along the river? Yeah, the septic system. Well, at least a porta potty that's pumped on a regular basis. Exactly correct. That, that, that should be a requirement for every property that has a camper. Um, Bill, I think you're uh, you're in that what was an ad hoc committee that was meeting on Thursdays or something. Yes, and that was that was with the other you know the other entities in town. Yes. Um. I assume police and fire were represented at that. Yes. And are they happy if we don't mention them that they'll, they'll be covered under Tommy under the CFA. They, uh, they likewise have their own statutory authority. So they don't, oh. you know, the, uh, the fire code does not have to be mentioned uh, because but, it is. Okay. We can't exempt we cannot exempt compliance with the fire code by not mentioning it. Right. Okay. As long as they're happy. 
Jim, did you want to ask if there were any other questions from anyone? Yes. Anybody else have any input? Comments? Questions? John Q. Public. Come on, we always like to hear from the campers. <clears throat> well, this is Rob Baranowski. I, as I've been on all the meetings, and I think this is what the campers have wanted all along. Um, something easy, something straightforward, um, something that works with frontage, something that works with square foots to be compliant with social distancing, the 25. So this is kind of, I think you'd find that most of the campers, people are, are going to be on board with this and actually really like this um, new, new, you know, um, whatever it's called you've written. Code. <laughs> Code. <laughs> No, oh, nice job, Bill. Um, I mean, I've been in the meetings as well, and I think it's um, it definitely, um, definitely, definitely very Thank you. Thank you. Well, one of the things that helps on these meetings, we've we've seen it before when people attend the meetings when these this topic these topics are brought up and they get their input. We'll listen. Similar to when we had the marijuana bylaw being proposed. We had multiple meetings. Yeah, it took a long time. It wasn't easy, but we got a bylaw that worked and satisfied most people. When people don't have, like you, don't put their two cents in, we kind of work, if you would, in a vacuum, and we put forth what we think works, only to find out down the road, you know, that may not have been such a great idea. So we really appreciate your input. Thank no, you. No, we... We really appreciate working with all of you and uh, giving our insight and you guys actually, um, you know, going with some of our stuff. You know, nobody here wanted anything unreasonable. And when we found out all the other hoops that people had to go through, it puts a different spin on everything. So, so, so does anybody think they will be there for 179 days? I'm just curious. Yep. So, job, we put, so we have to put chalk on their tires. <laughs> <laughs> I think the river, the rain, will, the, the, <laughs> the weather will put the chalk on. Anyways, okay, Nick, this is this is good. Thank you very much. Um, I think the bylaw is pretty much ready to go with that bill. Okay. Um, all right, I'll. Uh, Let's see, probably the best thing to do is get it all to you so you can standardize the numbering. Right, yes. So Ken, I know we've been working with a version of it, but would you be able to just send us what you believe to be the most current version of everything else in section 13? And yeah. I think at some point we may want to say something about um, in addition to the flood zones, mention the Hadley flood zone because that's not contiguous with the federal flood zones. But it's shown separately on the, we could just say yeah, that you could be in the Hadley flood zone or in the other zones. There, there's not 100% overlap. It's uh, shown on the zoning map inset, Ken, as where, uh, <clears throat> where the federal and where the um, town overlays are so, so would you would you because i know that you address it similarly in a separate section um i think it's three point something um where it's specific to the hadley flood zone um i don't think that there is any issue if you were to incorporate these standards for that as well with regards to really you're addressing well, let me think on that. Let's not muddy the waters just yet. If we <laughs> necessary, uh, it, yeah. it, it, okay. It, <laughs> we'll take a look, another look at that because I, I want to get it right the first time. But you say we can take out V, E, and V zones because those yeah. are coastal. Correct. And mm -hmm. I was thinking maybe just slip in the Hadley flood overlay. 
as well at that point. But okay, we'll uh, we don't yeah, want this. We'll take a look at that. But what I'll do, Bill, is I'll send you um, the last working copy that I sent the board. Um, obviously, thirteen point seven is very different, and um, maybe the way that you can address it is just removing what yep. currently is there and then replacing it. Yep. We can cut and paste. No, uh, Jim, Jim, Jim had some pretty strong feelings about removing the Hadley floodplain though. We're not talking about removing the Hadley floodplains. We're talking about removing 13.7 and replacing with Bill's version. Oh, okay. God, I'm sorry. Down the road, we'll discuss the Hadley floodplain yeah. because because correct okay yeah so i just wanted to note in the um in the chat uh tony lynn morelli made a note that the uh, hadley learns town inclusivity group will be discussing the topic of zoning and affordable housing on april 1 at 7 p.m We'd love to have the planning board and anyone else from town attend. Feel free to email me. Uh, and that's going to go away um, when the meeting ends. Uh, did you want to say anything about that group while you have a, a captive audience? Um, thanks. I'm actually on the Conservation Commission, too. So I'll also share oh, okay. some of that information back. But, yeah, we saw you there last week. Um, we just, we started about 10 months ago, you might've been hearing us, um, sending some emails around, but we were starting to talk about this topic. So that's why I dropped in both for the concom issue and also seeing that some of their conversation about, um, a little bit on zoning. So anyway, we're, you know, it's kind of a book club discussion with trying to take on some of these topics we've seen on with the change in the law, as was mentioned, state law, there's some potential for more conversation and more um, changes around zoning and Hadley as we've seen some conversations in Amherst as well. So we'd be happy to have you as um, experts and leaders in our town and part of that conversation. It's just like an hour and a half Zoom call we do once a month and that's the topic this time. Is this a Zoom call? It's a Zoom call, yeah. Could you could you just forward the information to Bill at the Hadley at Planning at Hadley MA so that he can distribute it to us? Absolutely, we'll do. This is this is time where I'll make one of my editorial comments that I traditionally make when somebody's saying affordable housing. Hadley has thirteen percent of his house housing considered affordable, by far the largest in Happy Valley. We, yeah, it sounds like it'd be great if you came to the conversation because um, well, there's a lot to talk about. And just because we're the best in the Valley doesn't mean we can't do better. <laughs> well, well, nevertheless, why should we take out an additional burden? Because you have to extend you know, water and sewer, et cetera, et cetera, that you cannot uh, really object to. But other communities... Sutherland is putting some up, but they only had 1%. Hatfield has 4%. South Hadley has 5%. So some of the other communities should step in line, and there doesn't seem to be any sanctions against these communities. Yet uh, people, because of the students in the area, think we should have more affordable housing. So the other part of it is, where is it going to go? It's going to go probably on good agricultural land. There's certainly some space up in Leverett, Pelham, Shutesbury that have very little affordable housing that will not eat up the good agricultural land. So those are my editorial comments. So you've just seen a mini preview of what town meeting will be like on any article regarding affordable housing. Great. So. Thanks uh, for, um, yeah, highlighting that. And but yeah, if you could just cut and paste that what you left in the uh, in the chat because it's going to disappear when I uh, end the meeting. But if you could just uh, copy that, forward it to me, I will share it with the rest of the board. Thank you very much. And I will also send my revised uh, seasonal use bylaw over to Janice Stone. She can share it with your board. Excellent. Thank you. You're, You're muted, muted, Mike. <laughs> Well, next meeting. Excuse me, Tony, one second. I just want Ken to comment on that new 
state law regarding uh, how, what percentage you need to make changes relative to housing. Ken, does that law state that it's preferred that the affordable housing be placed where there is mass transit? Um, that's best practice. I think if you were to talk to other planners across the state, um, it's what they call transit oriented development. And normally you would want to increase density around those areas, around those nodes. Um, and there is a requirement um, for MBTA communities. So out in Eastern Mass that are required um, that this threshold and some standards specific to developing around these nodes um, that the towns will be required to um, adopt. Um, it, it doesn't apply here. However, I think, you know, if you were to talk to developers and, you know, our, our public transit system is not as rich as Eastern Mass, um, you know, maybe they would want to um, identify places in town where they could increase density knowing that they could take advantage of either the transportation network or amenities. I think also um, what you may be seeing is um, a, a discussion of, um, yeah, that, that additional housing um, where, you know, towns may be engaging um, the community to do mixed use to you know, just be able to leverage the town's priorities and the town's plans to their advantage to develop you know, what they'd like. Um, so I think you'll be seeing in the future um, things like that. And you know, at the same time, you know, I think this is consistent with where the board is and where the town is with regards to the master plan. And I'm just thinking specifically around the Hampshire Mall. And, you know, I remember being at an earlier planning board meeting where there was some, you know, passing discussion with regards to um, exploring new uses or multiple uses on some of those parcels. Um, I'm not sure where the town is with regards to the, um, the study and the, and the um, grant that, um, that yeah. we applied for at the end of last year. Um, to get some technical uh, assistance to study that particular, you know, corridor. Yeah, there's uh, a, yeah. there's actually a student from Hampshire that. College that inquired of me last night about repurposing Hampshire County. The kid's a Hadley native and just, mm -hmm. just he, I thought he was going to come here tonight, but he decided not to. But there is interest out there, so, academic interest. Well, this is, uh, I remember seeing a, uh, a rendering of the Hampshire Mall converted to apartments, and this was by a students from the University of Massachusetts planning department, whatever it is. And so, uh, you know, academics, they want more housing uh, for their students. And I think the University of Massachusetts has abdicated the responsibility for housing their students. They're throwing it onto the community and say, go fetch. And... Uh, but the minute, the minute you mix residential in business areas, it is always a controversy when something is proposed. Just the recent example was the uh, people that made them lop off one story of uh, housing on the apartment building that's going in right over the Amherst line because there was some objection from the people that lived in uh, Greenleaves. So uh, it happens all the time. So, and the other thing, Ken, from our point of view is the fact that we're still citizen soldiers. Uh, the, the buzzword now for gaining more uh, housing is infilling. Well, it seemed like a good idea, a small parcel, you could build a small house in it, but look at the controversy it's creating in Northampton already. And Amherst is proposing it and once again, uh, the people coming out of the woodworks, it's not a great idea. So uh, we are citizen soldiers and we probably get more of a pulse of the people than ordinarily uh, town planners would. So. Oh yeah, I, and I think that that is definitely true. You are in the middle of two growing communities 
and the development pressures are going to be enormous. And especially with the expansion of the widening of Route 9, there's going to be development pressures coming down, you know, to that. Is the that a widening of Route 9? Address. Or I don't see it as a widening <laughs> of, for automobile traffic. Yeah. It's narrowing, <laughs> as a matter of fact. But yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I have do bicycles that. count as mass transit if you make them free? <laughs> some communities, because some communities have established that out in Eastern Mass. Really? What do they have to get license plate to pay their freight? Uh, Ken, I have not heard anything about that grant. And uh, as you okay. know, we had a change in mm -hmm. management as of January, uh, December 31st. Um, I don't know if there is any way you can check from your end uh, just to, to see if uh, they've been issued. They're, um, yeah, I, I, I actually have forgotten some of the details of it, and I'm sure that our current town administrator probably does not have it at the front of her plate, but okay. uh, so we could just yes. find out what happened. That'd be great. And Ken, one more comment. Uh, the nuclear fuel rod for the growth in the area is certainly the University of Massachusetts that has grown in leaps and bounds. Uh, like everything else, it's not going to continue to grow in leaps and bounds. There's probably going to be more remote learning after the pandemic uh, uh, exercise, and uh, we may not see a lot of growth in the area. That's true, too. Uh, yeah, where the pandemic has, like, really changed the, the dynamic. Oh, the traffic is unbelievably void in certain areas. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll keep quiet for a while. We'll have to see what happens on uh, that front. Anything, Ken, next date. Next meeting date for Ken. Want to do April 20? Uh, it looks like we don't have a lot going on at our first April meeting. Next to the next meeting. Yeah, but that's three weeks away. Oh, that's right. We got five Tuesday month. Okay, let's make it April 6th, Ken. Okay. So there's one thing uh, that maybe Ken would be able to work on. Uh, we've been talking about tweaking the uh, funding formula for the um, affordable housing payment in lieu. Yeah. And um, I think the one we had in place that was on the warrant for the fall special town meeting had language we didn't like and wanted to amend out uh, basically saying prevailing wage right. um and that maybe is something we should we should take care of now so we can get a, a revised draft of that to um and, and i'm not sure how we would play around i found a formula for a flat fee type payment and we had talked about having the mechanism for determining the amount in the planning board regulations, yeah. but I just not sure what we have to tweak in the enabling bylaw. So okay. maybe you could just take a look at that. And we could discuss that. Yeah, I know you shared that um, a couple of weeks ago. So right. I'll take a look at that and see if the bylaw that we had drafted um, needs to be amended to, you know, to any effect, um, because the goal, as you mentioned, Bill, is to to have the formula and the um, way of determining that in the rules and regs. So, yeah, we'll just well, the, the idea. The idea, Ken, was would give the would give the developer a choice to have a flat fee, a flat rate per you per build per lot, and if they could demonstrate a lower fee by the you know price is a lot the wholesale price and the, and the mortgage then we would accept that oh okay so it'll be, a, it'll, be a, it'll be a two different ways they could do it but they've got to demonstrate the prices okay and i sincerely doubt anybody's going to come up with a lower rate than we're going to have for a flat fee 
Yeah. So. Okay. So Bill, I may be in touch with regards to maybe what the documents we're working off of. Um, okay. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Okay. I, okay. I don't have any updates on any of the other items. The um, Riverfront Committee will be meeting this Thursday at 6. Um, maybe I will, I, I don't know if Dee Dee has all of you on that mailing list, so I will send the, uh, I'll send that notice around too if anyone wants to check in on that. Yeah, I'd like to attend that one again. Anything else, Bill? I have nothing else. By the way, talking about the uh, Board of Health, there is a write-in candidate for Emma Dragon's uh, position, and she's a woman that lives in East Street Commons here, Margaret Mastroangelo. So just keep that in mind. There is a write-in for that position. Okay. Okay. Anybody else have anything? Nothing? If not... We'll adjourn the meeting. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And thank, thank you, Ken. And thank you, John.